So here's the problem. I gotta pull the gas tank back out of the RX-7 to clean it because there's a bunch of just crud and dirt and wind noise. And if you think back to the video where we first got it running and then shortly after, like halfway through that video, the pump started making a terrible noise, I chalked it up to just a bad pump and I didn't really think much of it because it was just, it was a pump that was given to me that was sitting on my buddy Justin's shelf. Uh, so I ended up stealing one of the new pumps that I bought for the Firebird and threw in it because it's the same style like 044 pump. And then uh, not too long ago, that one started also growling, making an awful noise. Well, when I pulled that pump out, I noticed that a bunch of like dirt fell out of the end of it by the pre-filter. That's not good. So I checked uh, my inline filter and the thing was just completely caked. It was like horrible. So the good news, 99.969% sure that I found the issue of why it was going lean when I'd get into boost. It just couldn't physically get the fuel. So the good news here is this tank is super easy to drain. The uh, not so good news is <laughs> Uh, it hangs really low. But I'm not sure what I'm gonna drain it into because it's not like I can fit any of my gas cans back there You see the problem So I think what I'm gonna do here's oh this one's cracked That yeah, might still be fine Here is my kind of redneck plan for figuring this out. I'm going to pull the um, lines off the tank, let them drain into here, and then while it's draining in there, I'm going to have my uh, fluid transfer pump in here, pumping it into the gas can. Kind of five head, I know. Big genius over here. I really wish I'd have noticed how grungy the tank was when I had it out the first time, so that sucks. And naturally, this is right after I put almost 11 gallons of fresh E85 in it, thinking that maybe I was just out of gas. Uh, I'm gonna have to put one of the fuel lines back on. It's filling up too fast. It's up to about here now. Oh, why didn't I have this one ready? It filled up faster than I thought. There we go. Alright, so I got it all drained. I don't know if you're going to be able to actually see anything. I mean, the bucket was clean, but it's not nearly as bad as I was expecting, considering what I saw in the tank or in the pump and in the filter. Uh, so, to be honest, I'm not really sure what to do. I'm still going to drop the tank and clean it out, but it's just it's not as suspicious as it once was. But I did have an idea to put some of that E85 in the lawnmower to see if it makes the lawnmower mow the lawn any faster. in a little more. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. No, please stop. No. No. Stop. It's so much. Thank you. 
I got the uh, NPT to AN fittings out and you can't see too well but you can see something in there looks kind of just like a chunk of rust so there's, there's maybe half a gallon to a gallon still in here I'm just gonna find a spot and let it drain out and flush a bunch of stuff out of here and then probably to be honest I'm not sure how I'm gonna clean this out because uh, the only place I know of like nearby that I can take the tank to and they'll hot tank it, clean it all out, and then reseal it is a place in Lansing. I don't remember what it's called, but I know where it is. It's four o'clock on a Friday, so I'm not gonna be able to make it there in time. So I'm just going to see how clean I can get it. And uh, hopefully that's clean enough. All right, man, I really screwed up. I should have filmed this because as soon as I sat it on there so that it could all drain, uh, I picked the tank up because there's like a half gallon or so in there, you can see. I picked the tank up and I just shook the hell out of it. And as soon as I sat it here to drain, this stuff, you, you can see it's just like brown crud. It looked like sewage water out of a motorhome or something. So I think what I'm going to do now is um, probably let that finish until it's done dripping and then I'm just gonna hook the hose straight up to the fill neck here and just let it run for a while and periodically shake it up but yeah that was bad all right so it's a couple days later I uh, got the car all back together I did end up flushing the tank out as much as I could possibly do uh, and then I took it over to my dad's he had some leftover red coat from when we would do motorcycles all the time we'd use that to reseal up the tanks so we did try to seal it as best we could I'm not gonna make any promises but uh, compared to how it started when I was flushing it to towards the end it's as clean as I think I can get it without actually taking it to that place in Lansing so just putting some fresh E85 back in it and about to take it down the road hopefully Fingers crossed, fingers, eyes, and toes all crossed that we can actually get into some boost finally with this thing. I think just in case anything else goes wrong, I'm only going to put the one tank in it. Battery's not dead. Put the old tune in it because I think. 
think this is still the one where I put a bunch of fuel in it, seeing if that was the issue. So I'm gonna put the put the old tune in it and uh, see how close that is. But yeah, I think our fuel pressure issues are a thing of the past now. Um, back, back, file, global configs. Um, let's try, oh shit. Try this one. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna look under the hood. See how everything's looking, see if we blew off a coupler. No, all that's looking good. No fires. Oh, I forgot I've never put a catch can on this yet. Everything else is looking good.
So I need to rotate this up a little bit because this coupler is sitting on the uh, wastegate dump. My dipstick tube <laughs> blasted a little bit of oil. That's not the end of the world. Everything else seems good except the fuel pressure. When I came, when I left, it was like idling at 61 pounds. When I came back, it was idling at 56 pounds. So that has me a little concerned. And the fuel pump was making a weird noise again. So I'm not thrilled about that. But getting to kind of experience the boost in this thing a little bit, this thing boogies pretty good. I don't think I ever went past like 75% throttle, and it was way faster than the truck ever was. So I suppose we just pull this line off so we can take the filter out and take a look at it. Hopefully it's not too bad. Let's see how quickly I can do this. There's a spot up here I can tuck the line. Not too bad. Oh yeah. There's some funk in there. Yuck. Yeah, there's definitely some ungoodness happening. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up. It's so bright out today, but it was definitely starting to get packed. I think I'm just gonna get that cell and throw it in there. All right, and then I just pulled the whole pre-filter off to look at the filter inside the uh, pump. It looks like that's all good. So this thing was definitely doing its job, thankfully. So yeah, I think I'm just going to throw it back together for now so that I can move it around. And it seems like whenever there's just a real high demand is when it clogs it, so. I think until I save up and throw the new cell in it, I think we're kind of out of commission. But we can at least drive it around, so that's cool. Well, very mildly bittersweet, but at least we figured out exactly what the issue was. Turns out it was the tank. So, like I said, I'll probably just order that Rhodes fuel cell for it. It's nice and low and wide, so it should fit under the rear floor pretty good. Uh, and then just a few small things here and there. I knew that I needed a different dipstick. I, I can probably fix this one, to be honest. It was just blowing out a little bit of oil right there. I need to rotate this housing just a little bit more. There is a gap there, but I still don't really want to risk melting that coupler. Uh, and then catch can, headlights and blinkers and everything. Need a little bit of attention for the wiring. And I need to put the seat belts back together. Well, I guess really I need to find them. The part that bolts to the floor there, I have no idea what I did with them. I'm pretty sure they were in the car when I got it. I have no idea where they are though. And then at that point, I think it's pretty much done. Oh, and I did look over the data log for this real quick. And I shifted at 5,500 RPM and it was making 13 pounds of boost. So we were moving pretty good. If you wanna do some like bench racing math with it, let's say the engine uh, at the flywheel naturally aspirated makes 350 horsepower. Theoretically, when you put 14.7, we'll call it 15 pounds of boost, that doubles it, so that'd be about 700. So that was in the like 600 horsepower at the crank neighborhood, and it was moving pretty good. And the car should be relatively light. I'm hoping it's less than 3,000 with me in it, so it should move out pretty good. And I'm not trying to make crazy power with this thing. I do want this thing to actually be a legit street car. That's why it's full interior. I want to fix the lights. I want to be able to just drive this thing pretty much wherever. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you next time.